Here's the situation. Both teams out of timeouts. 77-75. NC State leads at UNC Greensboro. Good. Everybody watching. No no They've uh, restored the clock back up to 14. They, they had had it at 13.5. I don't know if that'd make a big difference or not. You never know, of course, in the sport of basketball, especially you get down to a buzzer beater. Here's Massey to throw it uh, inbounds from the right corner. Gets it to Miller behind the arc right wing. Checked by Johnson. 12 seconds. 10, 9, 8. Here's Miller right wing. Crosses over. Miller into the lane. He turns. 10-footer straight on. Rims him. Oh. Game tied with 2.1 seconds remaining. Miller now with 26 points. Here's Johnson heaving from the midcourt line. He got it. He got it. He got it. He got it. State wins. Incredible. Markel Johnson being mobbed at the scorer's table. The Pack wins this ball game 80 to 77 on a buzzer beating heave from near half court by Markel Johnson that went right through the net. excited and you should be man after hell of a win. When you look back at our last three games from the second half of Memphis to the Wisconsin game to uh, Wake Forest until today, you know we've been a little bit but we never broke. And that's what I'm proud of uh, with you guys. I remember I told you when we went out for the second half, just win the half. Just do what you got to do to win the half. I thought some guys played great. Uh, let's congratulate Pat. Uh, he goes over a thousand points for his career. Yeah. You know, when I took the job, the vision is to make NC State uh, uh, a program that we fight, we claw. We don't want anything. We got the referee, we weren't getting much calls. Things didn't go our way. But we stuck it in and we fought. That's what it's about. That's what this program's about. And I can go down the line, man. And just every guy that played, every guy that was on the bench, your excitement and how you locked in and how you were prepared and you understood what it took to get another great road win. That's two great road wins in a row. And uh, what a hell of a call I, I made at the end when I told Markel that I threw it up and <laughs> saw that level to the middle. Shoot the ball. The guys made two half court shots, uh, which is impressive. Uh, you live and right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say all of that. But, <laughs> but it's done a great job. But listen, I'm proud of you guys. Let me tell you something. I love you guys. I love how hard you worked the last couple of days. Uh, and guess what we're going to get? Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. That's what we're you know, when I first got my break, um, you know, I, you know, I was coming from becoming, I was a head coach for a couple of years and got my chance at, at Marshall to become an assistant coach and, and just was grateful for the opportunity. Energetic, um, excited, hard worker, um, dedicated, uh, wanted to build a great relationship with my players, uh, but wanting to learn. Uh, each day I, I felt like uh, I needed to learn something different and I thought I was able to grow a lot as a coach. You're a good basketball team. Believe in yourself. Keep building. Because we did so well, and I love you guys, uh, we're going to take them all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Together. One, two, three. Yeah. This holiday season, make the most of your road home. Hurry in, receive a credit of up to $4,500 on select models now through January 2nd. For years, you've relied on your electric cooperative to power your daily life. Now, we're going one step further. North Carolina's electric cooperatives are building a network of electric vehicle charging stations across the state, boosting tourism and economic opportunities reducing emissions, and empowering our members with the latest technology. Learn more at ncdriveelectric.com.
To be a great explorer, you need to be ready for everything and anything. You need intelligent four-wheel drive and active terrain management system. You need the most available driver assist technology of any vehicle in its class. You need enough cargo space for any adventure. But to be the greatest exploration vehicle of all time, you need all those things inside this thing. The completely redesigned 2020 Ford Explorer. It's the greatest exploration vehicle of all time. Bring it in, bring it in. We got a lot going. Remember, you all probably don't remember this, but we got called for two illegal screens on handoffs yeah. against UNCG. So when we're doing that, I think Devin got called for one. I don't know who the other person was. But dribble right to the guys on the outside shoulder. If you're dribbling right at the defensive player, all you're doing is just handing it back. If you're dribbling to your offensive guy, it looks bad. That's the illegal screen. Anybody else got anything to say about, about the game coming up? Again, bro. We beat them last time. They gonna come out and we on their court. And you know what? We're gonna beat them this time, okay? Same but with the same thing's gonna happen. You know how good it feels to go in somebody else's house and win. I, I think when you skip steps, um, you, you not that you can't be successful at the highest level, but. I think what I learned as assistant is very valuable to me as a head coach. Uh, I understand my assistant coaches. I, I understand what they go through. I understand that they have fam families. I understand that they have life outside of basketball. Uh, we're able to balance a lot of this stuff. Uh, but I also listen to my coaches. I think that's important when you hire somebody, um, you get a chance to listen to them. You want a different voice. Uh, you want some different opinions. Uh, and that's what I was able to do. The guys who I worked for as assistant coaches both allowed me to be a coach. You know, I worked for uh, Greg White at um, Marshall, who was um, tremendous, and you know, he let me um, obviously um, you know, do a lot of things. And then having a chance to work for a Hall of Famer, Rick Pitino, you know, he was he was great because um, you would think that he would be the most dominant voice in the, in the gym, and that's not always the case. He wanted you to coach. Um, you know, he hires you, and he would tell you that you know I don't hire assistant coaches; I hire future head coaches, and I thought that was great. My aspirations obviously were to be a head coach one day, uh, but it wasn't like I felt like when I went to Marshall that, you know, I was going to be there for two years and all of a sudden I'm going to be a head coach. Uh, I'm from old school. Uh, I'm one of those guys that realized that you have to work every step of the way and it just doesn't happen for you that quick. Uh, my long-term long goal was obviously to be a, a head coach at Division One, and that happened, but it was a lot of hard work and patience. Oh. So, <coughs> here's a couple of things um, when I went back and watched the tape. Uh, we got to get better. Uh, we played a good team. And obviously, they're going to win a lot of games, and um, they have a chance to compete and win their conference. And I think they will win the conference. Uh, but it's a good league, and that league, uh, just to give you a little bit about the league, the league is the same league with Walker did, who beat Carolina. Um, at the same time, same day that we play. That being said, this is probably our worst scouting report game as far as us knowing what to do in our short season. And if we want to continue to win a championship, man, we cannot have all of the breakdowns that we had. And so it wasn't good. Uh, we gave, you know, we had a situation where we went up 10, we went up 12, and every time we went up something, we, we didn't follow scouting reports. We got to get back to that, man, because that's how that's how we're successful. We spent a lot of time on tape, and we spent a lot of time showing you guys that we do it in the film room, and we do it on the floor. And if you don't comprehend scouting reports, man, that's what gets you beat. Um, you guys, I expect you to be smarter than that. We had too many breakdowns, okay? We're blessed we won the game. Markel hit a big shot at the end. Uh, if not, we go into overtime, and you don't know what can happen in overtime. You could lose the game on somebody else's floor. Okay, not that that was going to happen. I always felt like we were going to win. But I felt like that the game never should have went to overtime. Um, I felt like that, you know, a win that we could have won anywhere from 8 to 15 points on a good team on their home floor on that particular day, I thought we were better except for our breakdowns. Every time they scored, majority of the times they scored is because we broke down. 
Okay, and when we can't do that. So you got to lock in. I keep telling you guys, man, if you start breaking down and I don't trust you as a coach to be able to follow Scott report, your minutes have to come down. Not that I don't love you as a player, but I can't have you in the game because you become a liability. And coaching, as you guys will learn, in anything in life, you got to have trust. And you got to be able to trust the guys that you're putting on the floor to be able to do the right thing at the right time. Lock in, uh, let's learn from it, let's get better. When we go on the court, I want your full attention. We had a day off, we played a good game, emotional game where we won, and now we got two days and really a shoot around to prepare for Auburn. And I expect us to be locked in and understand what your job is and do your job to the best of your ability. We beat them here last year. They essentially got the same team. They lost a couple guys off of last year's team, but they played the same way. <laughs> They want to race up. They want to get up and down the floor, scoring there about 85 points a game. All right. They want to shoot a lot of threes, just like UNCG, and they're going to pressure us full court. All right. So the game plan is going to be very similar to the UNCG game and what we have to do to win the game. But we have to do a better job of locking in on the scouting report, and it starts with the personnel knowing who we got to guard. For me, I like to watch, uh, you know, the first couple of tapes without looking at any any stat sheets or anything from the other team, kind of composing my own views and um, ideas about the team. I watched every every single one of their games, and I kind of go uh, start from the top. So they try to go with their first game, especially early in the season like this, kind of go from their first game and know what they've done. And started out to do in the first game all the way until their game leading up to us. So if I'm watching the first game and then I get to the last game, I can tell, okay, they started out with these three sets or these four or five sets, and now they moved to where they got 15 or 20 sets now, or this uh, particular player was only going over his uh, left shoulder, uh, you know, the first three games now, and he's developed a, a counter move where he's going out to his right shoulder, he's spinning back left, and then you make your notes. Well, you know, while you're watching the tape on personnel, offense, what do they do offensively, what the team does, does defensively, what each individual player does, what's their tendencies, is he a driver, is he a three-point shooter, is he a, what we call a do-both guy, we'll introduce it to the team, we'll introduce personnel to the team, their players, their starters, the guys that come off the bench, and then we'll introduce the man offense to them, and then the man defense, um, their, their defense, how they play, how we're going to score. You should be in the night just in case they try to reverse it across the floor, all right? We're going to dribble right here. This is not a screen. He's just getting here to get side, this side of the floor. Get back, get back. Ice, switch it. Yeah, you switch. Good, good. Danny, when he spin, when he spin, uh -huh. when he spin, he spin right back to you, force him to kick it out to Jericho. Yes, yeah. And a lot of these guys haven't done the scouting reports where, you know, from high school or prep school or junior college, where they come from. And then a lot of them haven't done it um, as extensive as we do it, you know, we do it here. So to see the team and the guys go out and execute the game plan, that is um, very gratifying to, to, to the coaches and our entire coaching staff. <laughs> First year assistant coach, I was coaching Coach Keith. He drove me up the wall. <laughs> um, first year assistant coach, I was at Farham College in 1993, Division III school. Um, I just got done playing. I graduated in uh, May 93, and I started coaching in, uh, in August. It was one of those 10 month deals. I was missing playing, being a part of the, of the team and playing, and obviously I just graduated, so I had known everybody on the team. They were all my friends, obviously my teammates, and we had uh, won and won the championship. But uh, being an assistant coach was uh, it was uh, a change for me. It was different for me. I'm gonna be in the office, work all day. Um, not it's a little, little different than you know being a being a student. That's 453 left. We're gonna need it. Gonna need it. Gonna need it. Max, you ain't said a word all day, man. Come on, talk to your teammates. Talk to your teammates. You gotta get better at talking on the floor and everything. Run, Danny, run, Danny! Run! Push yourself. I knew I wanted to coach, and uh, you know, I think it was uh, my sophomore year, and I, I was named the, the captain. Or maybe in my junior year, I was named the captain. I've always been kind of a a leader, um, 
you know, I never remember dating back to my military days and when I went to the National Guard and I was named the, the squad leader. I worked for a coach, he, he said he would, he would sometimes, a lot of times, tell the players, you don't know what you don't know. And I, I, I felt like, I, I felt like that, uh, you know, when I was coaching, I didn't even know what I, what, what I didn't know. And obviously, it, it, you know, I'm still learning a, a, a bunch of things, but over the years, I've picked up a lot from the different guys that I've coached um, under, picked up a lot from even the players that I've coached. Okay, Cole, okay, okay. That's the mood, that's the mood. Hey, that's, that's the move. That's the move. I, I want everybody in the program to get better from game to game and from year to year. Um, I, I, every assistant coach that I have on my staff, I think are very capable of being head coaches, and I want those guys to want that. Uh, if they don't, then I probably have the wrong people. Um, you know, I want those guys to have the opportunity to become head coaches because that means that they're working extremely hard every day. Same thing with my players, um, you know, we got some non-negotiables. I, I want those guys to be great people. I want them to put themselves in a situation where they're gonna graduate and get a degree. But also, uh, if you're coming here to play at NC State, I want you to play at a high level where you have an opportunity to play some type of professional basketball. And I think that carries on for the entire staff. Uh, I want guys who are, um, you know, forward thinkers. I want guys who, who obviously want to grow in their profession. And uh, when you stop working, then, you know, it's probably time for me to get some other guys. To be a great explorer, you need to be ready for everything and anything. You need intelligent four-wheel drive and active terrain management system. You need the most available driver assist technology of any vehicle in its class. You need enough cargo space for any adventure. But to be the greatest exploration vehicle of all time, you need all those things inside this thing. The completely redesigned 2020 Ford Explorer. It's the greatest exploration vehicle of all time. For years, you've relied on your electric cooperative to power your daily life. Now, we're going one step further. North Carolina's electric cooperatives are building a network of electric vehicle charging stations across the state, boosting tourism and economic opportunities, reducing emissions, and empowering our members with the latest technology. Learn more at ncdriveelectric.com. This holiday season, make the most of your road home. Hurry in, receive a credit of up to $4,500 on select models now through January 2nd. I'm so excited, man, for this opportunity, okay? Very seldom do you get an opportunity like this before a conference play. You got one. All of the pressure's on them. All you got to do is just come on and play hard. Take your fight to them. Come in here and get ready to take care of business. Let's go. He'll drive to the hole. They're going to do that a lot. And the first bucket for Wiley and a foul. Knocking down the long three and a really good start for NC State. C.J. Bryson. Push good, bounce pass in a flush. What a pass. And McLemore. He knocks down a three. Johnson to Helms who takes it hard. That's blocked by Wiley. Rebound twice in a good effort there by Manny Bates. Boy cross court. Johnson his first three. He got fouled in a four point play, perhaps. The pace is now Johnson is anywhere he wants to take it. It results in a wide open three on the backside for Pat Andre. Back-to-back -back threes, this time it's C.J. Bryce. Great nice. pass, Funderburk with a flush. 
And there's our guy again. Just He's taking the ball anywhere he wants to take it. Downey long three, and he finds the bottom of the net. Way off, and a uh -oh. chance for a breakout dunk here from Doughty. Instead, a foul and a basket. Kicks it to Andre, heave three, no good. Auburn will take a one-point lead into the half. We were talking about keeping them off the offensive glass. They only have two offensive rebounds. Great job right there. Nice. I love it. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of every day that we in practice. It reminds me of every day when we in practice, and you know how hard we go at each other. That's what it reminds me of. This is great right here. You're doing a good job right here. This is really good compared to them. We're helping on Wiley. They got one guy who's aggressive. That's number 10. Okay, and then 23 will drive us up, but we're doing a great job of uh, finishing at the rim. If you didn't finish and you didn't have a great half, so what, man? This is what basketball is about. We got good guys that we need. We need, guys, we need everybody in this room. And all I ask you to do, man, is when you go out there in the second half, you fight and you fight the whole time. Did we do everything perfect? No, absolutely not. We know that. Okay, we know that. But at the end of the day, we took everything that they had. Everything. They made shots. They were aggressive. And guess what? It's a one-point game. Three-pointer, and that's going to anger the Auburn folks. That's Dowdy. Long launch, ah. and nothing but net. Andre, three. That's good. He is a terrific three-point shooter as he knocks that one down. Markel Johnson back in the game. Drives, so and that is strong. The launch a three from the corner, oh. and it drains. Big-time shot. McCormick taking the bump and making the basket. Good drive, Devin Daniels with the left. He wants to go to the hole, oh, and he gets it to go with the left. Isaac Okoro starting to flex for Auburn. Great nice pass, work. Pirafoy. Wasn't that nice? Come on, Brady Come on, we're good. Brady go. Nice, tough shot, no good. But an offensive rebound by Funderburg. Cuts it to three. Nice cut. Bam, Pirafoy, what a bounce pass there. Rice Lane opens up for him, and he lays it up and in. Not a good pass from Johnson, Purifoy to the hole. Oh. They'll call the block, the bucket is good. And Andre buries a big three, 74-69 with under a minute to go. Now he's gonna throw a three up and knock it down. That's a game winner. And Auburn is going to start this season 10-0 and after making the Final Four last year. This holiday season, make the most of your road home. Hurry in, receive a credit of up to $4,500 on select models now through January 2nd. For years, you've relied on your electric cooperative to power your daily life. Now, we're going one step further. North Carolina's electric cooperatives are building a network of electric vehicle charging stations across the state boosting tourism and economic opportunities, reducing emissions, and empowering our members with the latest technology. Learn more at ncdriveelectric.com. To be a great explorer, you need to be ready for everything and anything. You need intelligent four-wheel drive and active terrain management system. You need the most available driver assist technology of any vehicle in its class. You need enough cargo space for any adventure. But to be the greatest exploration vehicle of all time, you need all those things inside this thing. The completely redesigned 2020 Ford Explorer. It's the greatest exploration vehicle of all time. This portion of Wolfpack Hustle is presented by Coca-Cola. When you're stocking up for game day, be sure to grab a Coke and share it with a friend. Share a Coke and go pack.
our effort Brave. and the way we fight is on we, we know we're going to do that what we have to work on is to, to get better and be the best that we can be is right here yeah, we got to play we, we got to play smart we, we can't let the crowd bother us. We can't let referee and bother us. You know how it is on the road, especially in the league. You, you know how it's going to be. We're put, as Coach talked about, we're put in those situations every day. We're put in those situations every day. We have to become a smarter basketball team. The effort is there. How hard we're playing is there. We're executing is there. But when we get this right here, we're going to be special. I'm proud of you, first of all, because you fought your ass off. And in games like this, on you're on the road, you're in a hostile environment, you get a chance to learn a lot about your team. And what I learned is that we're a good basketball team. We got a lot of fight. Okay? We do a lot of good things. But what I want us to mature from this game, and I tell you guys, especially if we lose a game that's really tight, it's a, it, the game could have went anyway, either way. Okay? But if you lose a game like this and you learn from it, because all of our ACC games will come down to these type of things and their possession games and their one turnover here, uh, one foul here, uh, a big rebound here, okay? But if we learn from those, we'll be better for it, okay? And did we do everything right? Absolutely not, no, okay? But we gotta get tougher in certain situations, meaning when you get a big stop, you gotta get a big rebound, okay? Meaning you gotta know time and possession. You gotta know that if you dive on the basketball, and the terrible ball, don't try to force it out of a dab. We got a hell ball and we got timeouts. Those are the things that I want us to mature from. And those one or two things didn't lose you the game. I can tell you that now. It's a whole lot of stuff that happens in the game that make you lose the game. But what I learned is, and this is good for me to know, is that we're a good basketball team. We, we got to become a smarter basketball team. And okay, we got to become smarter. You guys got to grow up in that area and you got to be smarter. And you got to make plays. Well, I'm still learning. Um, I don't know that there's nothing that I know now that I didn't know then. Uh, what I would say is every year that I have been a coach, uh, I've had to adapt. And I think the, the biggest thing that we've had to adapt to, or I have had to adapt to, was the kids. Uh, kids are different. Um, you know, they respond different. You know, they're a little bit different. Uh, I tell my staff all the time, uh, they, they always go back to when they played. And I said, things are totally different. Um, you know, they look at, hey, we would never. And I say, well, that's where you make your mistake at because these guys are nothing like you guys played. It's a different era. If they're a top 15 team and you played them to the end on, your, on their floor, then just imagine how good you can be if you lock in and do all of the right stuff. As a coach, I can live with that if we get better. If we go the other way, I don't live with it. Okay? But if we learn from that and we get better for that, and you guys stick together and you bust your ass to get better, and you take this bitter taste that you got in your mouth right now about losing one, and the, way you, the reason why you feel the way you feel is because you know you had a chance to win. You have to say to yourself, I'm not, we're not gonna make the same mistakes that we made and we'll get better and we'll grow from it. Man, I love y'all, man. I love the way y'all fought. I love everything about it, man, okay? Even if you didn't have a great game, it's okay. That's what good teams are about. Okay? But we're going to get better from this, man. All right? All right, let's go. Together. One, two, three, together. together.